everyone. Um, I'm going to present a word on um, comprehension of unstated interactive meaning and the impact of individual's autistic traits. So it geared toward individual variation in meaning comprehension in real time. And this work is done in collaboration with Michiro Maguchi at my Sam Institute and Maria Pinango at Jail and Sakai Hiromu at Waseda University in Japan. So in this study, we uh, examine the phenomenon of unstated or unspecified iteration. And this can be exemplified by the following pairs of sentences. Take a look at sentence one. The atlas swam for 10 minutes. So the interpretation that you will get is probably one swimming event lasting for 10 minutes. So one time swimming event. Mm -hmm. Now compare one to two. The athlete jumped for 10 minutes. So same structure, but now you suddenly get iterative meaning of several jumping events during this 10 minutes interval. So sentences like uh, two with unstated iterative meaning exhibit the following properties. Linguistically, the iteration is not morphosyntactically supported, and by this I mean it is not specified by any words in the sentence, nor is it specified by the syntactic structure of the sentence. And psycholinguistically, previous studies have shown that comprehending sentences like two with unstated iterative meaning is more costly during real-time comprehension. And it is associated with localizable brain activity in Wernicke's area and Broca's area. Okay. So conventionally, this phenomenon is captured by this either operator hypothesis, and it goes like the following. Assuming that durative for adverbial, select for durative verb. Now, when you combine the durative for adverbial with the punctual verb, you get an aspect of mismatch in the semantic representation. Okay. The mismatch then calls for an iter operator to be inserted in the semantic representation, and that shifts the punctual verb into an iterative meaning. This is how you get multiple jumping events for uh, jump for 10 minutes. On this hypothesis, then, the processing cost observed in previous literature comes from this insertion of iter operator in real time. Now, however, this hypothesis uh, failed to account for sentences like three. The atlas swam for a year, like habitual reading. Okay. So now, the composition is, uh, if you compose a full <coughs> adverbial, which is durative, with the durative verb. Now, there's no mismatch in the semantic representation. So there's no motivation for invoking this either operator to, to repair. However, you still get the iterative meaning in three. So the point here is that you get an underspecified iteration in both uh, cases with punctual verb or a durative verb. Okay. Um, just to complete the picture, and now we have this multiple different kind of verb and different <laughs> lengths of the form adverbial, and the structure is exactly the same across the board, but you get iterative meaning in some cases but not the others. What they have in common, though, is this form adverbial. So, the, the observation that we have is that the final interpretation of the sentence comes from the evaluation of both the verb and the full adverbial, and that will be clear later on. Okay. So several questions emerge at this point. First of all, how do comprehenders, which is you guys, obtain unstated iterative meaning with both durative verb and punctual verbs? And second. If it's not because of the iter operator, then what makes it costly during real-time comprehension? And we are seeking to, um, uh, to discover what individual factors and linguistic factors that contribute to uh, such a meaning computation. So the patterns we observe can be summarized as below. The iterative meaning does not depend solely on the verb, as we just saw. In fact, the composition of the event denoted by the verb and the four adverbial give rise to an interval-based reading. With punctual verb, jump for an hour denotes intervals of jumping. With the durative verb, swim for 10 years denotes intervals of swimming. The properties of serve, well, we argue, are rooted in the meaning of the four adverbials. This is captured by Dale and Pinyango's semantic analysis in 2011. So essentially, it says that for adverbial, like for an hour, introduce an interval whose length is essentiated by the number it's following for. So for an hour, you get this um, conceptual uh, representation, like shown in this figure. 
This interval can be segmented or partitioned into a set of subintervals. When the partition measure is set to be infinitesimal, which is essentially too small to be measurable, the sentence yields a continuous reading, and this involves one single event overlapping with all cells of the interval, with no gaps between the subinterval. Okay. On the other hand, the non infinitesimal partition measure involves distinct events overlapping with each cell of the interval with gaps between the subinterval. And that gives you the iterative meaning. So there are two ways to uh, partition the interval denoted by 4 adverbial. Now, how do you do? Uh, we suggest that the comprehender partition the interval based on two essential, uh, two critical uh, linguistic factors. One is the interval denoted by the noun phrase following for, an hour or a year. The second component is the conventional or lexicalized duration denoted by the verb. So for example, jump is point-like or short-living, whereas swing is longer or unbounded. Okay. So it is through this, uh, the, the evaluation of these two components that you will get the final interpretation of the sentence. So that's why we say the meaning is contextually determined. It, by, by context, we mean both sentential context and discourse context if there's one. Okay. Uh, so then based on this semantic analysis, we formulate a processing hypothesis to capture the real-time comprehension. And this is how we uh, conceptualize like, what does the processor do in real time. And I will demonstrate with this sentence using punctual verb to begin with. The athlete jumped for 10 minutes. Step by step, it goes like the following. Upon encountering the verb, the processor retrieved the event, of, uh, the event representation denoted by the verb. By analysis, 4 introduces an interval whose length is instantiated by the following noun phrase, which you get a 10 minute interval. Receiving these items in composition, the processor builds an infinitesimal partition measure by default because that is the most suitable partition measure in the domain of time. Okay. This gives you one jumping event lasting for 10 minutes. With that larger context support, this turns out implausible. Then the processor builds the non infinitesimal partition measure, segmenting the 10 minutes interval into a set of sub events. And now you get multiple jumping events during this 10 minutes interval. Okay. The same process applies to sentences with durative verb, the athlete swam for a year. So again, upon encountering the verb, the processor uh, retrieved the lexical representation denoted by the verb. That's a swimming event. Four introduces an interval whose length is instantiated by the following noun phrase. So now you get one year interval. <laughs> the same, when you have these items, the processor builds an infinitesimal partition measure by default. And this gives you one swimming event lasting for an hour, uh, a year, which turns out to be impossible. Then the processor builds a non infinitesimal partition measure, segmenting a one year interval into several sub events with multiple swimming events. So you, as you can see from these two cases, the same process applied for sentences with both durative verb and functional verbs. Okay. On this hypothesis then, the processing cause observed in previous literature results not from the insertion of the operator, but from the determination of the partition measure given the sentential and discourse context. So the process wants to find um, the partition measure for the interval denoted by four adverbials. So this predicts that, regardless of verb type, all compositions, all compositions with unstated iteration will be more costly because it needs the implementation of the non-infinitesimal partition measure. Okay. The second point is that uh, we are interested in knowing what are the individual variations during real-time comprehension because uh, throughout the time we have been noticing a certain degree of individual variation in language processing, and we are wonder like we want to find out the underlying um, factors driving this variation. The second reason for this is that previous study have shown individuals with autism encounter a language difficulty, especially in cases that involve context in uh, computation. So, for example, some people show that they have difficulty in information integration, like irony processing, metonymy processing, and homographs. They have also shown insensitivity to context. The other line of literature on uh, cognitive psychology showed that they show tendency 
to what deliberative reasoning before making a decision. And we have been arguing that um, the processing of on-stage iteration requires this contextual evaluation. So as such, we predict that individuals with higher autistic trait might show greater difficulty getting the unstated stated uh, iteration than those with lower autistic trait. Okay. So those are two sets of uh, predictions regarding linguistic factors and individual factors. Okay. So to test these predictions, we uh, implemented four conditions, crossing two uh, lengths denoted by the four adverbial short versus long, and two verb types, durative versus punctual. We did this in Japanese, which is a verb final sentence uh, with case marking system. We did this because it is typologically different from English, and we did that in English before. So we want to see whether a different language system will show the same pattern. Okay. So I'll just do the English translation in black here. So the athletes swam or jumped for 20 minutes or for two months at the gym. For half the sentence, uh, the, the crucial thing is that the composition of the durative verb and the short interval serve as the baseline because it does not involve unstated iteration. All the other three compositions involve iterative meaning, which is not stated. Okay. And half of the stimuli contain intransitive verb preceded by locative uh, case marker. The other half compose a transitive verb preceded by accusative case marker. The thing is that we suspect the different case marking system might contribute to different uh, online profiles of language comprehension, and we want to see where, uh, how that plays a role here. And not, but the, the crucial thing is that the uh, continuous reading versus iterative meaning does not depend on verb transitivity. Okay. We begin with the questionnaire with naturalness rating. Um, 50 sets of the sentences were created, uh, verb frequency and length matched, 25 participants were recruited, and their task was to rate the naturalness of each sentence from scale one to five, and then give their interpretation of the sentence. So here are the results, and then just recall that we have four conditions. The one on the left in blue, swam for 20 minutes, is the baseline. The other three conditions involve unstated iteration. This is what we saw. So three things to be noted in this figure. One, four conditions were rated within the acceptable range, about three. Second, we show a graded pattern in naturalness, and which we think can be characterized as a function of meaning uncertainty. For example, jump for two months on the right in yellow is rated lower, probably because the interval is extremely long, given a point-like event. It is therefore harder to pin down or to determine the partition measure for the expression. Um, so we think that this pattern reflects a degree in mean search without larger contextual support. Okay. So that is, the harder the partition measure can be determined, the lower the perceived naturalness of the sentence. And next, we uh, investigate the real-time comprehension uh, profile in a self based reading. The same theory, and now we focus on the four regions of interest here, the verb and the two regions following the verb, and the sentence final region. Um, 48 participants were recruited. Um, their tasks were to read sentences segment by segment at their own pace. And then we asked them to fill in the autism spectrum questionnaire developed by Karen Cohen and O in 2001. And this is a measure for people's autistic tendency, which can be used in typically developed population. In data analysis, we separated the participant into two groups depending on their AQ score high versus low, so with, with significant difference between the two groups. Okay. Now the results. Um, the y-axis represent the reading time, the x-axis represent the windows of interest. Now the first set of results indicates that the transitive verbs are read uh, faster than the intransitive verbs. We think that this might reflect the different case market in the pre-verbal region. So in the transitive case, the verbs are preceded by the accusative case marker. It allows the processor to expect a transitive verb to come. So thereby, the processing cost will be uh, facilitated because it is, this expectation is fulfilled at the verb region. On the other hand, the, uh, in, in the intransitive verb cases, the pre-verbal case marker is dead. It's a locative case marker, which can be associated with multiple alternatives. 
processor will is then less uncertain, uh, is less certain about what to come. Okay, so this might reflect a predictive mechanism due to different case markers in the pre-verbal region. Um, and second, we found that sentences with longer interval show significantly longer reading time than expressions with shorter interval, denoted by four adverbial. And that, that happens at the verb plus one region. This can be shown more salently if we merge the two verb type. Okay. Um, the third one is that uh, if we, so remember that we have the difference between sentences with baseline and the other three conditions with unstated iteration. The contrast analysis showed that sentences with unstated iteration takes longer to read as compared to the transparent baseline in blue. Okay. And that happens after you hit the verb. Okay. So that shows that the comprehension of unstated meaning is costly. Now, uh, next we look at the individual variations during real-time comprehension. Uh, what we found is that um, individuals with higher autistic trait in pink tend to read faster in the beginning of the sentence. However, they stay significantly longer at the sentence final region as compared to people with lower autistic traits. And this sentence final delay, we suggest, reflect a difficulty in information integration because sentence final region is the perfect region for integrating all information that you get for the sentence. And it could be associated with the insensitivity to sentential context or it could be associated with the tendency toward deliberative reasoning. So they have to think more or deeper in order to get the final interpretation of the sentence. Yeah. Furthermore, we found that an interaction between verb type and interval within the high AQ group. So as you can see from here, the difference between the baseline and the other three sentences with unstated meaning is larger in people with higher autistic trait, but it's not so much in the lower autistic trait, uh, high, low AQ people. Yeah. So this suggests that individuals with higher autistic trait has more difficulty getting the unstated iterative meaning. Okay. So uh, to summarize what we found, we did not find a in fact a verb type which is, seems to be Uncom incompatible with the operator insertion approach. We found an effect of interval and the interaction between interval and verb type within the high AQ group. And this sort, this set of finding are more consistent with the partition measure hypothesis, which you really need to uh, evaluate the information from the verb and for adverbial to get the final interpretation. And this also implicate that individual uh, tendency, cognitive tendencies, did play a role in online reading time. So individuals with higher autistic trait require more efforts to get the unstated meaning. And as suggested, we think it has to do with more effortful meaning integration in sentential context. It might be also reflecting the deliberative meaning computation in order to decide what is the final sentence interpretation. So to conclude, um, this, the finding from this study suggests that processing under some, uh, unstated iterative meaning is costly, and that is the case regardless of verb type. So that suggests the cost comes from computing a partition measure in order to get an inter, in a, uh, in a appropriate sentence interpretation. Um, the linguistic factors involved in this process consist of the evaluation of the interval denoted by for adverbial also, the conventional or lexicalized event duration encoded in the verb. If there's a discourse context, then you also need to take into this course context to um, evaluate the sentence uh, interpretation. So taken together, we think this reflects a process system which is rooted in lexical representation and constrained by contextual information. Aside from these linguistic factors, we, we also observe and individual factors play a role in real-time comprehension, and that is impacted by autistic trait. Well, then, the, although these are conclusions, we think they're really opens um, other questions. For example, autistic trait can be underlined by many reasons, 
and we are not sure at this point what contribute to this variation that we see in real time. So that will be future studies. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>